Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us and to speak to our hearts. Just lift your hands and ask him to speak to you this afternoon. I'm excited about what he's doing. I'm excited about what he's saying. I'm excited about being in his presence. Just lift your hands and thank you for his spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for changing us. to us. How many of you have been involved in a season of withdrawal? If your neighbor is lying, pull their hand down if you can. You know that they're lying. Hallelujah. But I believe God is changing us as we pray. Amen. And um, we're in church. We're going to close in just a few minutes because our next session is our prayer session from 4 to 8. And so if you haven't been involved up until now, 4 to 8 is your chance to intercede and to pray for yourself. So I think it's correct for us to speak about prayer this morning as we are in the season of withdrawal. The Bible says Jesus withdrew. He withdrew. He left everybody and went to the mountain to pray. And I believe this season is a time of seeking God. Amen. After the fasting and prayer, we are all a bit calm. The Bible says Enoch walked with the Lord and he was not. So we are being reduced as we pray and as we seek God. Can I have an amen? amen? And I believe God is changing us. Your amen is very weak this morning. It's not as if I don't think you have you fasted yesterday, so I don't know why your amen is so weak. Can I have a strong first love amen? Can I have a first love scream? Can I have a first love hand clap? Can you stamp your feet like a first lover? stand to your feet, stamp your feet a lot of pre-seconds in the church today, but anyway 
Hallelujah. So, let's go straight to the word of God. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God wants you to be strong in him. God wants you to be stronger in him than you are than you are in pornography. God wants you to be stronger in him than you are in fornication. God wants you to be stronger in him than you are in your education. God wants you to be very strong in him. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Amen. Amen. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So this is the armor of God from verse 12 all the way down, describing the different parts of the armor of God. But today we want to concentrate on verse 18, which says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. This is a very loaded verse. Are you alive? Yeah. Pray always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Because there are types of prayer. There's a prayer with your understanding and there's prayer in the spirit. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, I'll pray in my understanding and I'll pray in the spirit. So you can either pray in your understanding or pray in the spirit. You can pray things you understand or you can pray things you don't understand. You can pray things that are in English or in tree or in ga on French, or you can speak in a language that nobody understands. Those are the two types of prayer. Now, Paul is saying, after you put on the whole armor, pray in the spirit. And so today, I want to share with you shortly on praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. And it says, watching thereunto with perseverance. There are some prayers that need perseverance and struggling and pushing through. And that's why we are withdrawing from normal life to persevere with supplication for all saints. Amen. Amen. Are you there or you're gone? Jude chapter 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, look at it again, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I believe God's will for us by sending his Holy Spirit when Jesus left, was to introduce to us this type of prayer, which is praying in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Why pray in the Spirit and not pray in your understanding? Because things are happening in the Spirit that we don't know about. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, which means if we are struggling, our current struggle is not with what we can see and what we can hold. There's something else that we can't see that causes our physical problems and our spiritual problems. And so the Bible says in Hebrews 11 that the things which are seen are not made of the things which do appear. Which means whatever problem you can see is not made of something that you can see. That's what the, the verse means. Things which are seen. Can you see it? Yes. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are appearing. 
So there are spiritual things happening. So how many of you have a, any problem at all in this world? How many of you have any struggle at all? Yeah, I'm very surprised how many people have problems. Now the Bible says if you are wrestling or if you are struggling, your real problem is not something that's flesh and blood. It's something that's in the realm of the spirit. So there are different beings and entities. The Bible tells us about so many types of things. The Bible says be careful to entertain a stranger because before you, were, before you realize you've entertained an angel. Hebrews 13 verse 2. So the, the angels are both good and bad because when the angels saw that the daughters of men were fair, I was telling the first service today that the angels had a window and when they looked down and they saw the girls, hey, girls are a problem. They saw the girls, then they turned and looked at the streets of gold then they looked at the girls again. Then they looked at the throne and they looked at the girls again. They saw the four beasts saying, holy, holy, holy. And they looked at the girls. They saw their hair and they were laughing. They were throwing their hair. Hey! Then they saw the river of life flowing before the throne. And they looked and they could hear in the background the worship. God in three persons. Blessed. But they were, look, the girls were giggling. Oh, the daughters of men. Oh, hey. And they left and came down. They left everything. I don't want the throne. I don't. Hey. Oh, there's no hope for mortal flesh. Oh, I tell you. Hey. They saw that the daughters of men were fair. And they came. Angels came to propose to girls. That's why I said, be careful when you entertain a stranger. Because maybe the person proposing to you is an angel. Look, I'm wrong. Look at it. So those people who came down are amongst us. And with us. And so we must. The Bible teaches us about different types of demonic powers. But we know that there are angels around working. And when Balaam was on his donkey going somewhere, an angel appeared in the way with a big sword, ready to cut off Balaam's head. Now, Balaam, now the introduction of Balaam is Balaam, the one whose eyes are open. But that day, Sometimes you shouldn't introduce yourself as something. You understand? Yes. Once in our class, people were standing for class prefect. One of the girls stood up and said, I don't mention him. I'm something the beautiful. She lost the vote. I mean, she, she, she. Sometimes you don't have to announce yourself as something. So Balaam said, I'm the one whose eyes are open. And he was on a donkey. But the, donkey, the donkey's eyes were open to see that there's an angel with a sword about to cut off your head. So the donkey took Balaam off to the left. Which means an angel can take your car to the left. But an angel standing in the road and his vehicle just went off. So spirits can cause accidents. They can cause... The, the donkey went left, then right. He went three times off the road. Then the, the, the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. started advising Balaam. Have I not worked for you all these years? Every time you say we should go, I go. This one, I say I've seen something. The, don, the donkey started to prophesy. Say, I'm a prophet of God. I'm telling you. I say, I can see. My, the donkey whose eyes are open, I can see. So he told, he told Balaam, I'm seeing something that will, will kill you. Which means that an, a spirit can kill you. A spirit was there to kill. The Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So things are happening in the spirit. There are animals in the spirit. There are frogs. Revelation 16, 12 or 13. 13? In Revelation 16 13. Help me. And I saw three unclean spirits, like what? Coming out of the mouth of there are also dragons. There are dra frog vomiting dragons. You see, if you're not a spiritual person, there are dragons that are they are, they are, they are hopping to you. And look at what they come to do out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Frogs. So there are frogs hopping around in the spirit as you are. Like a basically walking around, thinking that everything is okay. There are beds. Revelations 18, I think. Verse 1. After these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having great power. I think it's verse 2. Beautiful. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every 
foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bed. So there are beds flapping. And you know what the beds are doing? Next verse, verse 3. Because the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So beds cause fornication. So you see, you keep on fornicating. What's happening? There are some pigeons and some, uh, I don't know which other beds are in the spirit. Uh, and what? Owls. There's an aha. Uh-huh. There's an owl still who over your head. Who you are taking off your trousers. Who you are removing your, your scare. Who is a bed? There's a bed. So when you live as if there's no spirit realm, you, you, there's something wrong with you. The spirits are after you. They are their horses. The horses which came to take Elijah to heaven. Do you think they are horse from Ghana or Mali or Polo Club? That they were, they were riding. Have you seen a horse riding a horse up before? No, there are horses. If you don't believe in such thing, put your Bible down and join another religion. Yes, there are spiritual horses to think that everything is okay for you. No, there are spiritual lions. First Peter 5 8. The, the devil is as a roaring lion looking for somebody to eat. So, in the realm of the spirit, if you could hear, you hear, you hear things happening. It's dangerous and serious things. In Luke 10, Jesus spoke about scorpions. So you see, the air is covered. That's the beds. The ground is also covered with scorpions. You, you will tread on scorpions. So there are scorpions and serpents. Ah, my goodness. There are also snakes on the floor. Then there are dragons. Dragons and frogs also hopping in the mid-air. Because dragons fly. But they don't fly. I don't know if they fly high. Actually. I've never met one. But I know that they are round with wings. Then you have Leviathan. Who comes from the sea. Look. There are things happening. So, when the Bible says that things which are seen are not the fornication you see, it's made from a bed. Then the Bible says, beware of dogs. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Beware of dogs. Do you think it's your area dog that you have been walking by? No. Look at it. Beware of dogs. There are dogs barking. I mean, I really dislike dogs, honestly. So, I really follow the scripture to the letter. There are dogs in the world running after you've ever been chased by a dog you know there's nothing more scary coming for you and all these people don't speak english oh did do you think you can speak to us even an earthly dog you know one day i went to bishop saki's house to visit his children my brothers when i opened the gate i didn't see the dog so i turned in confidence that is my house so i turned and locked the gate <laughs> yes, yes, I love people as if I'm the house owner. So I turn and I lock the gate. I don't know what enters you. Spirit, uh, I lock the padlock. I don't know. I don't know. You know, these houses that don't have the key in it. I don't know. I think it's a style. We just leave the padlock hanging there. Somebody has the key somewhere. So I locked it. And when I turn, there was the door. The door called Captain John Snappy. I'd never forget. Hey. And I started to try and explain to him look, let's take our time. I, you know Joe, it's my friend. There's no need. I let her talk. Take your time. Goes, I don't know what to do. The dog is standing in front of me between me and the house. And I can't go back. Pharaoh and his armies are behind me. And the dead sees in front of me. I started trying to explain to the dog, calm down. Then the dog, you know this dog, they started. Uh, I said, look, before evening, there's no need to be angry. There's no need to be upset here. Calm down. And he bit my shirt in the end. But he came for me, then I and I went, then he took part of my shirt. Yes. So in the same way, the horses and the dragons and the, they don't speak what the language that you want to speak. You are not wrestling or struggling with something that's flesh or something that's blood or something that understands what you're saying. It doesn't, it doesn't speak your language. But the Bible says he that speaks in an unknown tongue, first Corinthians 14. He speaketh not unto men, I think it's verse 2. How be it in the spirit? He's talking in the spirit. And he's not only talking to God. He's just speaking mysteries. He's he's not talking to men. He's discussing in the spirit something called mysteries. Matthew 26, I think 46. 27, 46. Jesus' last moments on the cross. Matthew 26, verse 47. Yeah. Are you reading about the ninth hour, Jesus cried. How do you see the word? With a loud voice. What did he say? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which is, you see, the New Testament is in Greek. 
But Jesus didn't speak Greek. He was speaking Hebrew. So they translated it, which is saying, Eli. So every time you see something that was kept in Hebrew, they translate it for you. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you see the translation? 47. Some of them that stood by said, the man is looking for Elijah. He, sometimes, if you don't have anything to say, <laughs> don't say anything. You know, there's, there's nothing to say. Anyway, 48. Straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Wickedness in high places. 49. And the rest said, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. <laughs> So if you don't have something to say, 15. Now look at this. Jesus cried again with a loud voice. Do you see any translation? This time, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John couldn't understand exactly what Jesus said. They, they interpreted the first one, but they couldn't understand this one. Now look at the next verse. But the veil understood the, what he said. The veil responded. Are you with me today or not? The veil understood what he said. Then the earth did quake. Look. The ground you stand on doesn't understand English. There's another language called praying in the Holy Spirit. And the rocks around began to break. Your world will change when you start to communicate with the spirit world. I don't know if anybody is as excited as I am about this. There are things that don't respond to English. But when you begin to speak in an unknown tongue, you don't speak to men. So I would rather be at home saying, Rabba si mayaka siva. You know, what am I going to ask God? You see, you think about it. What am I going to pray about? If you ask me now, right now to pray for something, I may pray for Lukuzid. Maybe, but maybe I need to pray for my life to cross tomorrow. But I'll be praying for Luke. So most of our prayer topics are of course. That's why in Luke 11 verse 1, when Jesus came back, he went to pray. Luke 11 1, he went to pray in a place. When he finished and he came back, all the disciples called a meeting in the morning. And they were all waiting for him. So they saw him coming from the mountain. They called, Charlie, he's coming, he's coming. And they all gathered. Say, Lord, we've been watching you going every day. You go, you go, you come. You know, today, teach us how to pray. Which means prayer is a lesson. Because you would have thought, these are Israelites. They pray every day. They already pray from the Torah. But when they saw what the man was doing, they said, Lord, teach us. Which means prayer is a, it's a topic. It's a lesson. It's something that is taught. And so how Jesus was with the disciples is how the Holy Spirit is with us. In John 14, 16, he said, I have to go so that another comforter will come. So another Jesus is coming. That's the Holy Spirit. So what Jesus used to do to the disciples, that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. But he's also here to teach us. John 14, 26. He will teach you. So we are taught to pray. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Romans 8, 26. With moanings and groanings which cannot be uttered. Thank you. you are taught what to pray. By the Holy Spirit. And Prayer without a teacher is failure. First Kings chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, Solomon, God came, appeared to Solomon in Hebron and said, what do you want? I'll give you anything. Six, Solomon said, thou hast showed my, this, thy servant, my father, great mercy, and so on and so forth, many raps. Thou hast given him a son to sit on the throne this day. What do you want? He's starting with raps, which is also a lesson. Seven, and now, oh Lord, you've made your servant king instead of David. I'm a, I'm a child. I don't know how to go out or come in. Eight. And thy servants in the midst of people are great people which cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Nine. Give your servant what? Oh, help me here. A what? <laughs> to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this so great a people? Are you with me? Verse 10. The prayer made God happy. Like what he asked for. Are you with me? Or you're not with me? What he asked for. Have you asked somebody for something and the person got angry? I have before. 
I have asked somebody for something and it made him very angry that I will dare to ask for this. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yes. Sometimes you ask your father, your parents for money and they, they will tell you, you think money goes on trees? Have you heard that one before? You think money goes on trees? You think whatever. Then sometimes you say that, oh, even your friend or even your whatever, they give them this and they give them that. I say, then go and tell so and so's mother to give you. Yeah, all these things are experiences. But this prayer topic made God happy. Because he asked something that God would have liked for him to ask. So in the next verse, God, the Bible says, so God said, I will give you, you didn't, because you asked for this thing, I will give you long life, riches, life, and everything. Now the question is that how did Solomon know? Well, you see, if I ask you that, ask what you will. Ghana may be in trouble. If I ask you that, ask for one thing. Some of you won't even think. You start saying, where is the checkbook? Let me write exactly the amount that you need. But how did he know? In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 3, it will tell us how he knew. Proverbs 4 3. I was my father's son. 4. 4. He taught me. Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. 5. He taught me. Get wisdom and get understanding. He taught me. Charlie, if you need something, prayer without a teacher. So the Holy Spirit is sent to teach us what to pray about. Or else we pray, James 4, 3 says, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it on your last. So many of the things we pray about, we don't receive because we are off course. But in 1 John, I think 10, it says, this is the confidence we have in him that when we pray according to his will, 100% answered prayer, if we can pray according to his will. Dr. Yongi Cho tells a story about one day he, uh, he invited a pastor to come and preach and the pastor's message was boring and he was interpreting for the pastor. So at a point he realized that, look, the people, the message is not working. So he started preaching his own, like when the guy says, God is moving, he'll just say, drink one, then he'll change it to, this is, wow. Hello. Lift your hands and pray. So he started to interpret. When the guy says God is coming, then he, God, God is moving, then he'll say something else. So he, started, he says he preached about the Holy Spirit. The guy was preaching about something else. And so the people started receiving it. They lifted their hands. Come on, keep on preaching. Come on. Because sometimes what you are saying is not good for the people to hear. And in the same way, sometimes what you want to pray about is not going to work with God. But the Bible says the Spirit himself makes intercession. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. He gives intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, I, that's why Paul said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. I prefer to be speaking in tongues for hours than to be praying in my own understanding. And so, I believe that in this time of withdrawal, God wants us to spend time praying in tongues. 
The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails man. Which means we are doing a lot when we speak in tongues. Yesterday we were here for 10 hours. Praying in tongues from 10 to 8. As if we didn't go to school or we don't have jobs. But the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it does a lot. The flesh profits nothing. But the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man achieves a lot. So in this time of withdrawal, I want you to be aware of the spirit. And be aware that there are things happening around us which we don't know about. And when you don't pray, your life is determined by happenstance. And when you pray with your understanding, your prayers can be null and void. Because the Bible says we ask amiss. And so I want to encourage us to become people who speak in tongues. Now the Bible says, Jude 1 20, it says, Now ye beloved, building up your most building up on your host holy, holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. That means you actually build up on your faith when you speak in tongues. You build up on your ability to believe. Whenever you pray for something, you start to believe that it's going to happen. You build up on your faith. You can build up on other things. People stock up on other things. People are very. I know somebody who used to say that if he has a girl after one week and he doesn't sleep with her and he doesn't want a relationship to, that's also a specification. He just wants to sleep with one week. He knows exactly what he has to do. And people. And, you know, he was, he was telling a group of friends, we were about five or six of us, and then another guy asked that, oh, Charlie, then teach me. But you see, people are building up on different things. People are charging and getting ready. You should see people who go to the gym. You know, I once went to a gym, eh? and when I, when I walked in, I saw the guys who do teach the gym, what are they called? The gym instructors. And I said, Charlie, you've won. What else do you want? What are you doing here? Why are you here? I mean, see these people. I mean, what are you looking for again? And yeah, you don't even look human. You look like. And it's like, what do you want? People are building up their bodies. People are charging. You see, you see, girls. Sometimes when I come to church, I have to look and say, who, who, who is this? I don't know who it is. The person's face has transformed into. Another man. Wow. You see, people can change their complexion. Yeah. Do you know people do makeup up to their chest? Oh, yes. They color everything up to their chest. Yeah, to even it so that you don't see the differences. Wow. People are building up and charging. But you see, when girls are doing their makeup, you see, there's a point where they go still. <laughs> hey. And... And when, when, you see a, when you see a girl who has done makeup crying, it's different. She can't afford to just weep. No. Just. I said people are charging and building up. Hey, you see people, you see people, when, when you start the day, they look one way. Have you, have you, maybe you've not seen one before. Yeah. Then before you see, one day I was, I was somewhere and I saw somebody putting on makeup in a public place. She started. Now a foundation, what can the righteous do? So foundation. She was, then lipstick. Then the lipstick, they, they put something under the lipstick, which is another, it's called a what? You don't know. It's a, no, no, not the liner. There is a gloss. They, 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 they have to shorten the lip first. Then the color is up. They say, you are not built up. They, then they apply on top. Before they put the lipstick, then before they do the line, then sometimes the line, one color up, one color down, tones and shades, and people are charged. You may not understand. I once met a, a brother going to a nightclub. Charging, he, he put two condoms in his back pocket. He put some money here, put some money here. Then he put some money in his shoes in case he's, he's, he's uh, an arm robber meeting. He needs a backup to reach home. So he always has one in his sock. People know what they are doing. People are charged. But now the Bible says, are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? Ye beloved, build up yourself. Build up yourself. So you're asking why you can't stop fornicating. You're asking why you can't pray. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You are, you are a child. You can't do anything. You can't overcome anything. You can't achieve anything. It's because you are not built up and you are weak. But the Bible says, charge. 
And that word oikodomi is the same word that Jesus used when he said, I'll liken anyone who listens to these things of mine shall be likened to a man who built his house on a rock. And the winds came and the floods rose and the, the rains came down and his house was still standing. So will your faith still be standing in 10 years time? So that's why we are here this year to pray until you can't pray anymore. In tongues, not with a topic. Praying in tongues without a topic is enough of a powerful experience without giving a topic. Just to speak in tongues. The first, the first effect of the Holy Spirit in Acts is the speaking of tongues. When the Spirit fell, the people just started to speak in tongues. So when you don't, that's why Paul said, I thank God. I'm grateful to God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. What about you? Can you also thank God? So I really want to encourage us. You know, this season of withdrawal is our time to seek God and to pray. To make intercession according to the will of God. And I tell you, as you speak in tongues, you become more mighty. You become stronger. So Paul said, you may be wearing the whole armor, but please, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And I know that God is, according to the will of God, I don't know what God wants for me, but I know that what God has for me is greater than what you have for me or what I have for myself. And you know the amazing part? No man understands him, including you. You see, if you are somebody who speaks in tongues, there are moments when you ask yourself, what am I doing? If you if you speak in tongues, yesterday somebody told him that when he was praying, then he, something told him that your colleagues are at work. Oh. Like <laughs> your colleagues are at work. Your colleagues are doing something as you are here. People are learning. No, people are achieving things as you are here. You are here on Monday. You are here on Tuesday. You are here on Wednesday. You are here on Thursday. What are you doing? Lima zabra na mika soma. And you see, the things of this world are the things of the Lord are to this world foolishness. So you yeah, Bishop Oku used to tell us that he had somebody who used to always say that you people are always here. You praying both sakama both and soma both. You just saying anything that like, is it's useless. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's what he has chosen. God has chosen it. And so we are filled when we speak. Be filled by speaking in tongues. You are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are charged up. So if you don't speak in tongues, you know, Paul, Paul asked the church, have you, since you believe, have you received the Holy Spirit? The Bible says he laid hands on them. I think it's Acts 19. He laid hands on them and they began to speak in tongues. So this is the little sermon that I believe God wants for us this afternoon. And we should be people who speak in tongues. I feel sorry for you if you don't speak in tongues. We've been speaking in tongues since Monday. We are continuing this powerful season of withdrawal. We are going for a camp. Everybody is invited for the camp. And as you seek God, God, oh, we are looking for God, not for something else. The Bible says, My soul follows hard after you, not for it. We are not looking for something, we're looking for God. And as we find God in His presence, there's fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures evermore so i want to encourage you to seek god in this time of prayer you see some of you can't pray alone at all i mean if you if you are left by yourself after 20 minutes you pray and then when you check 10 minutes and you just give up that you know <laughs> it's not working so we use a clock to pray because there are no feelings attached you just look and say i'm building up myself Sometimes you don't shout if you're not Pastor Frank, your voice will go. It's not everybody who can be Pastor Frank. Sometimes when I watch him, I say, No, if I follow this, I'll die. Yes. If you're an Egyptian, don't go to the Red Sea. When you see them going, just say bye bye. Don't try. It's not everything you should try and do. Hallelujah. But I believe God is blessing us and helping us through His Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet. We're going home. Do you feel like speaking in tongues for a few minutes? What do you think? Just to charge up like a battery. What do you think? Lift your hands. There's no prayer topic, but he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. How be it in the spirit? He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. But he speaks mysteries. In the spirit, you are speaking mysteries. You are contending in the spirit against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are contending for yourself in the realm of the spirit. The Spirit is speaking on your behalf. The Spirit is talking to God on your behalf. The Spirit is explaining on your behalf. The Spirit is building you up and charging you up. Lift your hands if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't speak in tongues. Lift your hands and receive. The Bible says, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Receive the Holy Spirit and open your mouth and begin to speak. The Spirit will give you utterance as you open your mouth up to speak. Speak in that unknown tongue. Speak in that tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. How be it in the realm of the spirit? He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. You are being filled with the Holy Spirit as you speak in tongues. You are being filled with the Holy Ghost as you speak out. You are being filled. You are being filled. You are being filled. You are being filled. Transformed. Changed. Anointed. By speaking in tongues. By speaking in tongues. Receive the spirit of grace and supplication. Receive the spirit of grace and supplication. Receive the help of the Holy Spirit to pray. Receive the help of the Holy Spirit to seek his face and to help him. For no man can come to me except the Father draw him. By his spirit he's drawing you. By his spirit he's drawing you. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. For a few more minutes. Come on. Charge up like a battery. Charge your spirit. Charge your spirit. Overcome your flesh. And charge your spirit. By speaking in tongues. By speaking in tongues. He's speaking on your behalf. He's making intercession for you. According to the will of God. According to the will of God. For this is our infirmity. We know not how to pray as we ought. But the spirit itself, the spirit itself is making intercession for you with moanings and groanings which cannot be uttered. For I shall speak to them with a stammering tongue, a stammering tongue, a stammering tongue. A pure language, a pure language. Zechariah called it a pure language. Rabbi Zalami Kanim Batando. Chirabizi, Chirabizi. Romaliza Gando, Chimacinda, Angra Zimare, Maniga Zamoro, Rima Zabine Ramalo, Chimra Zangi Kango, Chambra Gine Mande Anda, Ramazinga Namro Dige Sige Mendo, Rima Zina Ninde, Ramazinga Brondo, Chibrodi Gaza, Chibrodi Gaza, Chibrodi Zaga, Ramos Igrevi, Rima Likanda Via Tamiade, Rita Ta 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 Ta, Rita Ta 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 Ta, Angos Kimalazi, Ramba Chimoleze, Rambi Kamandos Amra Simpolim Ranim Basande Chima Zamriando Ragasimiando Abra Zodo Thank you Holy Spirit Thank you Holy Spirit There's an anointing here Falling over me Touching my soul and changing my life, my spirit and my soul 
are being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. My life will never be saved. My spirit and my soul, my spirit and my soul. Lift your hands and sing it one more time. There is a sweet anointing in this place. There is an anointing. It's touching my soul. And changing. And changing. And changing. My spirit and my soul. My spirit and my soul. Hallelujah. With the power. What you want to do? do? What you want to do? We just offer ourselves as vessels. We just offer ourselves as vessels. You can use. Oh, Holy Spirit. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Move, Spirit, move. offer ourselves we just offer ourselves as vessels that you can use oh, Holy Spirit, oh. Father we thank you for your Holy Spirit thank you for the gift of speaking in another tongue thank you for the grace to pray thank you for the grace to seek you praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit we thank you for your grace and your help in Jesus name Amen Every head bowed, every eye closed You're here today You don't know Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior Pastor pray with me, I want to come close to God I want my sins to be washed away Someone invited me to church I've been coming for a while But I know in my heart if I die today I'm not ready to go to heaven Pastor pray with me, help me I want to dedicate my heart to you You're here like that, lift up your right hand high above your head Pastor, pray with me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be sure. I want to make sure that when I stand before God, I'll have nothing lacking. I want to make sure I make it to heaven. Lift up your right hand high above your head. You've lifted your hand. Do one more thing for me. Come down to the altar. I want to pray for you. Come all the way. as I am. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. One day I'm coming to heaven to be with you. Satan, I will no longer serve you. I will no longer follow you. From today, I belong to Jesus. From today, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, God bless you. This is a book from our father, the prophet, the pastor of this church. And he asked me to give you this book as a gift from him. His name is Bishop Dagi. And he'll be with us next Sunday. Make sure you're there.
know it's going to be a blessing. Amen. Would you please come right after service? Would you please come right over there where the beautiful people are waving? We're moving all of them from there just to make space for you as soon as service ends. So come with the book. That's how we know who you are. And you have a blessed time. Short meeting. And your life will never be the same. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. You may go back to your seats. You may be seated. I believe we have communion. Sisters, we are one. And our hands are just gently, gently in the spirit. We are young and we'll live forever. Come on, let's sing his sons of God. together. Shout together to the Lord. Who has promised our reward? Who has promised our reward? Happiness a hundredfold. Happiness a hundredfold. And we'll live forever. And we'll live forever. Come on, sing his sons of God. Sons of God. Hear his holy word. Hear his holy word. table of the Lord, eat his body, drink his blood, and we'll sing a song of love, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Stand to your feet, please. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. This is Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave thanks... Father, we thank you for this wonderful communion, this bread. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Lord, we remember your sacrifice. We remember your broken body. And we remember that there is no sickness, there is no struggle in our lives that you haven't already paid the price for. The body of Christ. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. This is the New Testament, the new version of you, the more improved version of you, the version with no sins and no mistakes and no flaws. Lord, we thank you for your blood that washes away our sins. The blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. 
hands and cherish that old rugged cross. So cherish, cherish it. The old rugged cross. Till my trophies, till my trophies, at last I lay down. Come on, sing, I will cleave. I will cleave to the old Someday, and a change is only for us. If you love that old rugged cross, if you love the place where your sins were forgiven, so sing it. The old rugged cross. The old rugged cross. Till my trophies, till, till my, my trophies, trophies, at last I lay down. I will clean. on Calvary, we receive the power of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, and we know that we have a part in him. Thank you for this wonderful blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, and everyone said amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout and a hand clap, and you may be seated. Amen. We are back in just about two hours for our final session for the day, 4 to 8 p.m. We'll be interceding. Make sure you are a part of it. I want to take this time to do a quick, very important announcement, if I can have your attention for two minutes. Next week is our camp. Well, this week is our camp. Um, arrival, is, arrival is on mon on Monday night, but the camp itself starts on Tuesday. But we all have to arrive on Monday night because we're starting very early on Tuesday morning. We're going all the way to Thursday, and departure probably for safety will be Friday or end of Thursday, but probably Friday. So, and then on, so that's the camp. For those of you who will not go for the camp, for whatever reason, I don't know which spiritual animal that is causing that, but I don't know why you wouldn't go for the camp. But if you can't go for the camp, you must still be in prayer. Amen. And so from 4 to 8 every day, from Monday to Thursday, there will be prayer from 4 to 8 every single day. But on Friday... We'll be here from 10 o'clock till 8 p.m. It's a full day prayer. It's not, it's not two sessions. It's one session. And we'll be praying. And I believe our prophet will be with us. With us Friday all day, Saturday all day, and then Sunday basically all day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That Sunday is the last day of the season of withdrawal. And it's going to be very powerful. Make sure you're here. Make sure you're at the camp. Make sure you're at the all day, the three days of waiting on God. And I know that God is going to do something great in our midst. God is joining us this year. Amen. As we seek his face, the Bible says, I love them that love me. So as we love him and we seek him, he's, he loves us back and he's joining us on the journey of 2019. Can I have an amen? So remember the announcements. Tuesday to Thursday, we are at camp. We are arriving on Monday. We'll probably leave on, from fr on Friday. We'll just come straight here and come and flow with the remnant. And then that is Friday, then the whole day Saturday, and then on Sunday is our grand finale. So the service will be a prayer service. The evening will be a prayer revival. And I mean, just we are praying. So by the time you wake up on Monday morning, you'll be changed into another man. Hallelujah. So this week is intensive withdrawal. We are going to the wilderness. And I know God will transform you in these times. Amen. I hope you all understand. The camp is arrival on Monday till Friday when we come and join the all day. Saturday, all day. Sunday, all day. That's for camp goers. For non-camp goers, Monday night, 4 to 8. Tuesday night, 4 to 8. Wednesday night, 4 to 8. Thursday night, 4 to 8. P.M., by the way. Don't come in the morning. Nobody will be here. Uh, actually, anyway, 4 to 8. Up to Thursday. Friday, the whole church is coming to pray. It, look. That one day, I mean, if, if you couldn't do anything, Friday, you have to get it off. Saturday is not a work day, so it's a little easier. We're all here. And then Sunday is our grand finale in the spirit. Hallelujah. So make sure you're here, especially Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
if you can't make it for the camp, at least get Friday off and make sure you are here for those three days. And I know your life will be transformed between the porch and the altar. So Prophet is taking us through the camp. I believe you'll be there and also for the all day. So I wouldn't miss if I was you. But for those of you who can't, we'll still be here to lead four to eight, like I said. Also, there's all night here the whole week, 10 to 4. So there are options, mom. But the main thing is that on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's all day. And then on Tuesday to Thursday, there's a camp. So you can either pray four to eight, you can come for the all night, but our advice, there's always the main thing we are doing. You always have a main meal and then the side, um, like people, I heard somebody going to Papa here to buy a club sandwich, you know? Let's try and be serious. When you go to Papa here, this is, you have to be serious. Or people go to KFC to buy water. It's powerful, but there's a reason to go to KFC. Do you understand? So the main meal is the camp and then the three days all day. That's the main meal. You have to be part of that, especially the three days at the end. But you can also pray all night. Some people have been here all night Monday, all night Tuesday, all night Wednesday, all night Thursday, all night Friday. At a point, you don't even know whether it's night or day. You are just in knock work with the Lord, and he was not. Amen. So God is helping us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take out your tithes and your offerings. I'm determined that we are closing in the next 12 minutes by the grace of God. So take out your tithes. If you are paying your tithes, stand to your feet. Pastors, please come forward. Lift up your tithes. Forever your word is settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word remains the same. I am the Lord. I change not. Am I a man that I should lie? My word will not return to me void. I shall accomplish that for which I sent it to do. I thank you, O Lord, that your word that says, prove me in this. Bring the tithes and the offerings that there will be meat in my house. And I'll open a window in heaven and pour out a blessing. I'll also rebuke the devourers for your sake. This word cannot be changed, cannot be reversed. For your word says the scriptures cannot be broken. Let these blessings come upon them and overtake them as they honor you with their substance and with 10% of their increase. We thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good time to sow your tithes. Come on all the way forward and put your tithes into the baskets. Amen. those of you who are not paying your tithes the windows in heaven are not open over your heads according to scripture and, um, and what else and the devourers have been set free on your life mercy so from today receive the grace to be a tither in Jesus name wow Amen. I believe you've been so blessed by the message our resident pastor Reverend Joshua while you're sitting down you can start taking out about the secret of prayer and I believe that as you that follow the, the secret of the season our lives will never be the same again now dollars, if you want to give if you want to give just go to www.daghewardmills.org then choose the online giving tag and yeah. online giving tab Ah, I can see and some follow the prompt. If you want board. to give, please go to www.dagheywardmills.org. Choose the online giving tab Beautiful. and then take follow out your the prompt. God bless you so bless much. Bless. And please, please join us for our Ghana prayer Ghana session Ghana at 4 p.m. God take bless out 200 Ghana cities. Take out 100 Ghana cities. Take out whatever you have. Whatever God touches your heart to give. And lift it up high above your head. Declaring that this is your gift to the Lord. After he gave his only begotten son to die for you. This is your response. Amen. Father, thank you for the blessing of giving in your house. Bless these offerings as they give in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderfully, quickly, and professionally, the airport stars are walking in the aisles next to you and receiving the offering on behalf of the church of God. Tell your neighbor, I attend a good church. Wonderful. Recover, drink water, use the bathroom, pray for strength, 
and um, come back at 4 p.m. to spend four hours in his presence. <laughs> wow. What? Could you not watch for one hour? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, what? You couldn't watch for one hour? If you would like to give your offerings by mobile money or by bank transfer, um, especially for people like Lady Pastor Ivy who is doing a bank transfer, large amounts cannot be brought in cash. Please look on the screen, take the details down and send your offerings. Amen. While we finish up our offerings, we have a powerful announcement, first of all, from Elder Jeremy Saki. So put your hands together and welcome one of our business elders to the stage. All the way, sir. Come on, away. keep tapping. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Um, let me come down because that's what everybody does. Um, quick question. Um, we, are doing, we are going to do a very short exercise. How many of you are on Facebook? Let me see if I show of hand. You're on Facebook. You have a Facebook account. Can I see your hands? I can't see your hands. Oh, great. Almost everybody. Um, I, want, I want all of you to take out your phones. Take out your phones. I have an exciting announcement uh, our father is on Facebook, so wherever he is, where he's preaching, you can watch him live. And you can watch our services live. Are you excited about that? Great. So I want to show you how to do it. Let's take out our phones. Let's all take out our phones quickly. And go to the Facebook app. If you're looking at my face, you're clearly not obeying my instructions. <laughs> How many of you have opened Facebook on your phones? All right, I know you are doing it, but the person sitting next to you is not doing it. So please tell the person to do it. All right, so type into the search field. It should be on the top somewhere. Type into the search field, Dag Herald Mills. That's D-A-G-H-E-W-A-R-D hyphen M-I-L-L-S. And search for Dag Hewitt Mills on Facebook. You should see an account show that's, that has a tick next to it. It's a blue tick, I believe. Click on, that, on the link over there, the name over there. If it's working for you, please show me your hand. I want to know if it's working. Great. Okay, so um, if you haven't liked the page, first of all, I want you to like it. Just tap. There's a, there's a button, there's a blue button that has like inscribed on it. Like and follow. So you can like and follow. How many of you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Great. And then I want you to scroll down. Like, scroll down a little. You should see, you should see this service actually streaming live. How many of you can see? Oh, great. I see someone there has... Is that Jonathan? Yeah, Pastor Jonathan. Thank you. you if you are looking at me on your phone screen, you're doing the right thing. Oh, awesome. Great. Wow. I did not look that good. Um, uh, so how many of you have been able to successfully enter your Facebook and like the page? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Wonderful. Wonderful. I knew the First Love Church had the best people in the world. Amen. So anytime our father is live on crusades, on um, co pastor's conferences, not too long ago he was in Toulouse in France and he was streaming live on Facebook. You can follow. You don't have to be there in person. You can follow. The Bible says that blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So as you see and as you hear, your life will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hallelujah. 
It's working. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Hmm. You should pass these exams and become a pastor. Hmm? Amen. Anyway, our beautiful airport stars are passing. Mostly, mostly single. Mostly. Mostly single. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Shigazomo Matibe Nananda. Chivazale. Chica, locate your daughters, oh God. Okay, you're laughing as if you don't like. You like. Okay, you guys, we are alive, but we have to behave. Hallelujah. Let's welcome for the announcement, Madam X. Put your hands together. It's a long walk up here, so put your hands together for them. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. Bowing, as for bowing, and about too late, and about too late. All right, if you're watching with us for the first time, could you please rise your feet? First timers, there's no other love that we desire, there's no greater love that. Draws us to you. Now there's no other love that we desire. There's no greater love that we could ever know. Blessed Jesus, you are my first love. There is no other love that can come in. Right, thank you very much. This is the first love church, and we're very happy to have you. Thank you very much for coming. As a service, please do not be in a hurry to leave. Our pastor will meet you and give you a very warm first love welcome and a chill drink. To my left where it says Salvation Corner, the red banner hanging up there, the triangle I suppose. Please meet there after service. Do not be in a hurry to leave. It's, it's only the first love church. And you heard from our pastor, our reverend PJ. Make some noise. Oh, make some noise. Wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Pastor Richard Na Yao Kundo, a missionary in Nigeria, is getting married to Joella Evans of the Greater Love Gospel Choir. His people are not here. Wow. So they're getting married on the 2nd of February 2019. The venue is at Adelaide Chapel, Kadesh. Time is 1.30 p.m. Their colors are shades of purple and white. If you have any just cause why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Practice kids.
Hallelujah. Final announcement is fasting. Your excitement is noted. Our fasting is from 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. Every day. In case some of you thought that was last week. 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. Not 6 a.m. to 4. So that when you wake up to pray at 3, then you see what God can do. No, no, no. It's 12 from midnight to 4 p.m. So may God help you to seek him and to find his face. Hallelujah. Are you there? Are you excited? So we have two hours. Take a break. Use the bathroom. Drink water. Find a beloved. And at 4 p.m., come back. And let's begin to pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Lady Pastor Cadella as she comes to close us off. Amen. Keep clapping and stand to your feet. Why don't you? Amen. Please hold your neighbor's hand. Let's share the grace. Please hold your neighbor's hand. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, participation, the 10,000 children into brackets, which includes all the important people for my life, and the first love of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Please, if you are worshiping with us for the first time, kindly move to the Salvation Corner. Please, the following pastors, we have a short meeting with you on behalf of LP Zoe, Pastor William LP IV. I believe you've been blessed. I believe you've been encouraged to pray. Now, thank you so much for joining us for the live stream of the Prophetic Encounter Service. Please join us at 4 p.m. for the live stream of the Porch and Altar Prayers. God bless you so much and see you at 4 p.m.